stop relying on men financially. Yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so as you can see I'm not sitting by myself today I'm with a special guest I'm with my mom say hi hi guys this is Benita's mom do you see how beautiful she is she took it from moi <laughs> yes yes yeah. Today my mom finally agreed to be on my channel. The last time she was on my channel is when I pranked her and she hit me very, 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 very hard. So ever since then she didn't want to be on my channel but now we finally got her back to the channel and we are going to be giving some relationship advice from a mom and wife and wisdom person's perspective. So since you're going to be giving some relationship advice, tell us about your relationship experience. How many years have you been married for? As many as 30 years. Yeah. And if you could do it again, would you do it again? With a very same person. Uh. Yes. Aww. So the first question, I've been with my boyfriend for five years and he has been cheating. Recently he, recently he got another girl pregnant, but I still love him. The problem is, the problem is, I also rely on him financially. A boyfriend, not even a husband, cheating. Run. Baleka, baleka, baleka. Get to baleka, 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 baleka. You had me. Run away. You know what? Women, stop relying on men. Whether you're married or you're unmarried, stop relying on men financially. Most women are staying in an abusive relationship like that because they cannot, I mean, they're staying in a relationship like just for a plate of food. No, no, no. Hell no. Stand up and do something for yourself. That's a small business. And people think starting a business is expensive. No, it's not. That money that he gave you because you rely on him financially. Take that money, buy something and sell. Buy tomatoes, buy fish, buy this and sell and make your own money and stop relying on a man. Women, learn to stand up for yourself. You can't stay in an abusive relationship for a plate of food. This man already got someone pregnant. Where, where's the love here? Where's the love? No. Baleka. Mm. That is 100% true. I mean, at the end of the day, you must understand that the things that you go through when you're dating is what you're going to go through when you're married. You see, you're not going to get married and then magically, because you're married, he changes. The behavior you see now will follow you in future and in future you have more to lose because you're married and you might have kids. A leopard never changes its spots. A leopard will always be a leopard. It won't change tomorrow as a donkey. No. Mm. So it's not going to change. You're going to, if you do get married, he's going to cheat on you and you will be relying on him financially still. No, in this Day and age, we don't rely on men. We do it for ourselves. As yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And another thing that I think people should be careful about is this thing of saying, in a relationship, we've gone through so much. When you trace what you've gone through, you mean he's cheated, he had a kid, maybe he hit you, at some point he left you, that's not going through a lot. That's someone putting you through a lot. That's uh -huh. someone abusing you. Exactly. Going through a lot mm -hmm. is sometimes you'll be together. Your partner loses their job. Yes. It becomes tough. That is going through a lot. Mm -hmm. But someone repeatedly abusing you is not going through a lot. You cannot stand abuse because you love him. You'll find someone else who will love you. Again. What do you do when he doesn't make time for you? He doesn't text or call like he used to. 
especially since the relationship is long distance. I think what you have to do there, find out why he's not calling and not texting anymore. You might find that you might find that he has lost interest in you, or maybe he's busy. But uh, it's not allowed to be busy to such an extent that you forget about your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife. That's not correct at all. But at the same time, you might find that as a woman or as a man, you're the one who's always texting, always calling and so forth and so forth. When things like that happen, just take a step back and see. Do not be the one calling all the time. Do not be the one texting all the time. One thing that I learned is just because you understand why someone is doing something, it doesn't mean you must accept it. So him, be, so him not contacting you as much because he's busy, I understand that, but I don't accept that. Because at the end of the day, you only have time for things you make time for. Even if the person is busy, he must make time for you. And if he doesn't want to do that, then you need to make it clear that I only am going to stay in a space where I am loved and respected and cherished, you know, because if you don't cut that thing out now, if you don't cut it out now, guys, it's going to go into your marriage and you don't want that. How do you deal with men who have lost their mother or dates men who have lost their mom? Yeah. Sure. Um, that might be a little bit difficult, but it's not really difficult. But one thing for sure is that you are not his mother. Don't, don't, don't turn into his mother, you are his wife or his girlfriend and he must understand that, you know. And this thing of like allowing him to say, my mother used to do it like this. If it was my mother, if it was my mother, well, sorry, I'm not your mother. And I, oh. How do you deal with someone from an emotional perspective? When, like let's say someone's mother has just passed on, how do you support them? You, 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 you give them a shoulder to cry on, you support them. And don't ever say, I understand what you're going through because you don't understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You either say, I can imagine what you're going through. And then allow them to talk. Allowing someone to talk does not mean that you must reply back. Just keeping quiet, allowing them to talk. You might find that that's enough. Mm -hmm. you know? And never say that it's okay, you lost your mother, but my mother is will be your mother. No, 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 no. Your mother will never be his mother. You know? And don't use your mother to replace his mother. But allow them to talk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will talk today, this morning, in the afternoon they want to talk again, in the evening they want to talk again. Don't say, ah, that's enough. You have been talking up and mourning and mourning about your mother all day. Just let them vent. Let them talk. So what if like as a result of the loss, this person now starts to act not so good? You know, like they just, maybe they drink more than usual and they're not paying attention to you anymore and that's how they're mourning. And this goes on for like six months. At which point do you say, I... Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I think there's one thing that we must not forget. Prayer. Pray for that person. Grieving can take more than three years. It varies from person to person. Get your pastor involved to try to give counseling to this person or get professional uh, people to counsel that person. But don't forget to pray with that person and to pray for that person. And be understanding, be understanding. Because when a person is going through uh, grief, Sometimes they sleep, they don't want to wake up. Sometimes they just sit, they don't want to talk. Sometimes you'll find them with tears streaming down their eyes. Just be understanding. But above all, pray for that person. And another thing is, you need to make sure you support people the way they want to be supported. Not the way you feel like you want to support them. You understand? So if they feel like, I don't want anyone around, don't force to be around because you prefer to show support that way. Make sure that you give people support the way they need it and not force your way. My boyfriend recently got diagnosed with cancer. I really want to support him, but I don't have it in me. Am I wrong for breaking up with him? Yeah, I think you are. You know, I think you are because do you love someone? Do you love him? Do you love someone because they're healthy? Where, where did the love go? Where did it disappear to? Because if you really love that person, then you will support that person. It's wrong that you want to walk away because your boyfriend has been diagnosed with cancer. 
I know that is difficult because you might be asking yourself, what if he dies tomorrow? Yeah, anybody can die. Even the person, the healthiest of um, people. You can walk out of your gate, got hit by a car, or just fall and die. So you need to support that person. Well, that's my take. You have to support that person because unless if you did not love that person, how do you walk away from a person that you love? How? How do you do that? Then if you just simply walk away, it means love was not there. Mm. Mm. Tough one. You know, I think that's a very difficult one. And, you know, I see that perspective of if you love someone, you will stand by them uh, through everything. But I want to present a different perspective. And this is going to be an unpopular opinion. But... Oh, how do you say it? <laughs> there are some things that you don't have the mental capacity, capacity to handle. And that's the truth behind it. If you are going to... Remember that movie we watched yesterday, the dad who was angry at his kid for being sick? Yeah. If you, you need strength to support someone who's sick and endurance. And if you're going to stay with them and they have cancer and you resent them, you say bad things about them, you don't really support them, you make them feel bad, it's better for you to walk away. If you know that you don't have it in you to really support someone, to really... Because cancer can be a long journey and a very scary one. And truly, if you do love them, there's a kind of love where even if you don't have the capacity, you'll find it some way. But if you have broken up with them, clearly you feel like you don't have the capacity to. And if you don't have the capacity to, then walk away, then to stay and abuse that person. Or to walk away from them when they need you. Because you feel like you can't handle it. The reality is, as people, we have different mental spaces. And truly, sometimes, sometimes strong people undermine the fact that other people cannot be strong because you're strong and you know what you can handle when someone else makes a different choice what you call the weaker choice because you know your capacity and you think how i would be there yeah but not everyone has the ability to be strong and take what you can take so really i think this one depends on your capacity your mental health and will you really ride for them will you really love them and be what they need you to be instead of you just being there to bully them. Don't stay out of guilt, that's for sure. Don't stay out of guilt. And of course, let's be honest, while you are allowed to leave, if you want to leave, you know, it's, to leave while someone is in chemo or to send them a text or whatever, like that's a pretty hard, like, look man, it's not nice, that's for sure. You have the right to leave, but it's not the nice decision to make. I want to present a different scenario here. We know that God heals, right? This person has got cancer today. And you love that person. And you leave. Then miraculously, God heals that person. After three months or so. Or any time. Then, where would you be? Would you go back to them? Because now they are healed. I think if you walk away from someone who's sick and they recover, you have no right to go back to them. Even if you love them, even if you miss them, it's not about, if you abandon someone when they are sick, don't you dare when they are healed, go back to them. There's a certain kind of love where you put yourself aside in spite of what you are going through yourself. And if you can't have that for someone, you have no right to go back to them when they are healed. If you leave, do not go back to that person mm -hmm. that you left when they really needed you. Mm -hmm. You leave. Do not turn back because you'll turn into salt. Oh my god! Like. <laughs> when like God, said, wife. God said to Lot's wife, do not look back. So once you leave, do not look back because you'll turn into salt. So do not look back. Once you leave, leave and don't ever come back. If your partner doesn't post you or make it publicly known that you guys are together, is he or she cheating or is he hiding you? Some people don't want to post their families for security reasons. Others, yes, they are hiding you. But find out why. What was the reason? What was the reason? Some people don't want to put their private life out there for everyone to see. But if I love someone and I'm proud of them and I'm not worried about security issues, 
then obviously I want to show them off. You know, with that one, I think it's important to really investigate why. Do you know why you must investigate, guys? I keep saying this, I'll keep saying this. Because men, some men, will hide a wife and or kids. <laughs> And they won't tell you, he won't tell you that he's married And he just won't post you, he'll say yeah you know Because of my job or whatever No, 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 no Listen, if someone, look there are reasons for some people not to post So for instance, if they use their social media for business and work You can understand that they're not going to post you But if they're posting their personal life And they don't want to post you, why is that? And another thing is some people though really don't use social media like have you seen those people by the way those are the best guys today those ones zero post you know uh followers are two following one thousand those kinds of ratios those are the ratios but some people genuinely don't use social media so you can't hold them to the posting standard but if you have someone who does use social media who does post and they're just not posting you that's suspicious that's weird the only reason why you can hide someone it's simple. You, you are ashamed of Even that. Even if I'm not dressing well, it means you came to me, you were attracted <laughs> by my style of fashion. So you will have to show me off. <laughs> because if you like me and I don't dress well, it means you, you, you saw me. Mm. When you met me, I was dressed like that. Mm. So you can't hide me. It means you must show me off Hi. that way. You know? Hi. The fact that I don't dress well and so forth, that's not reason enough to hide me. Mm. You know? I think where it gets tricky now is when you meet each other. Both of you are crusty, dusty and dirty. Then you start to level up. But this person doesn't want to level up. You know, like, they are just crusty, dusty and dirty. You know when you are looking clean, you are looking so nice, you are looking gorgeous. And then your partner looks like, you know, they just... But what do you do when someone really refuses to level up? No, you, 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 you buy the clothes for them. They don't wear. No, they will wear. You buy the clothes for them. You know, you buy the clothes for them. You tell them to, to do their hair. You, you, you hire a, a makeup artist to come and do their makeup because you cannot say uh, you, 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 you're not uh, suitable to go to the business functions with me uh, because you like this. So where are you going to go with? Mm. And if you can make your own wife beautiful or your own man beautiful, then you're going to admire other people's wives or girlfriend. Mm. If you want your wife to wear a nine inch high heel, buy it. Let them practice in the house how to walk. Buy it. In those heels. Let them practice in the house. Buy the clothes for them, you know. Buy, buy it, buy it. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with more videos. If you guys want to see more of this relationship segment with my mom, then comment down below and let us know. Peace and love, guys.